Welcome back. Last time, we began our journey focusing on how we might turn raw data into frequency distributions. These might be simple distributions, given the frequencies each number occurs, or group distributions, which splits the data into different bins. Now, when we think about a distribution like this, there are several things that we want to know about the distribution. We first want to know what is the middle of the distribution, secondly, what is the spread of the distribution, and what is the shape of the distribution. Today, we'll talk about the first part, the middle of the data. This should be pretty familiar to, to most of you, but we'll cover it anyways just to make sure that everyone is on track with things. Now, there are several main measures of central tendency that we can think about. The mean, which is the average, the median, or the middle, the mode, the most often, and then something called the trim mean, in which we also compute the mean, but we trim off the top and the bottom. Let's look at these in a bit more detail. Now, to make things a little bit more concrete, Think about, uh, these are some numbers of scores that students scored on a, a recent assignment. And so we have 20 different students here, and we'll use these as an example as we look at measures of central tendency today. Just going back to last week, here's a graph of the frequencies grouped into the grade schemes used here at the uni. Um, now, when you look at this distribution, where would you say the middle of the data is? We can make an, a guesstimate and say perhaps it's an H2B or whatever we want, but we, we might want to make that a little bit more formal through different measures of central tendency. So let's begin with the mean. Now, the mean is the arithmetic average and is found by summing up the scores and dividing by the numbers. So we see the formula here. Uh, the funny thing on the top, that's called sigma, and it refers to addition. And so x refers to the individual score, and n is the number of people. And so when we look at these numbers here, it breaks down to just adding up each person's score, dividing by the total number of people that we have, and here we actually see that we have a mean of 73.55. So it's pretty straightforward in this case. We get the mean by adding up each of the values and then dividing by the total number of scores that we have. A second measure of, of central tendency is what's called the median. This tells us the middle of the data, and, or the number that cuts the data completely in half. Now, this is a little bit trickier to calculate. I have a formula here, but the formula itself doesn't tell us what the median is. Instead, it tells us where to look for the median. Now, in order to calculate the median, the first thing that we need to do is order the numbers from lowest to highest. So here at the bottom of the screen, you see that I've ordered the test scores from the lowest, 63, on up to the highest, 85. Now, next we can look at the formula, which here is n plus 1 divided by 2. With this, it's going to tell us the position to look in. And so we have 20 people, 20 plus 1 divided by 2 equals 10.5. Well, what's the 10.5th number? It's the number that's halfway between the 10th number and the 11th number. In this case, we see that the 10th number is 73, the 11th is 74. So when it falls between two numbers like this, we actually want to take the average of those two numbers. Uh, so 73 and 74, halfway between those is 73.5. So. Um, in summary, to get the median, we order the scores from lowest to highest, we use the formula m plus 1 divided by 2 to find the middle position, and then we note the score that's in that position, or we take the average of two scores if it falls between two numbers. A third measure of central tendency is what's called the mode. And uh, with the mode, we're saying the most often number. 
The easiest way to think about this is to graph the data. In the middle here is a distribution, and looking at this, we see that five is the most often one, it's the most fre frequently occurring one. So sometimes it's really easy to see which one that is. There are other times like this where there's actually multiple modes. We see here that 69, 73, 74, and 76 are all occurring most often. In this case, it's multimodal. It could also be bimodal when we have two modes, um, or unimodal when we only have one mode. So in sum, graphing the frequencies is the best way to directly see which score occurs most often. One other measure is something called the trimmed mean. The trim mean is something that, that we can use when we have an outlier. So an example of this is if I have most numbers are fairly close to each other. A common example of this is income. So I might have a sample of people that all make between maybe $20,000 and $50,000. And then I have a millionaire in my sample. Now if I take the average of those people, I'm going to have a very high average number just because it's actually pulling the entire sample up much higher. Such that the average might be something like 100,000, 200,000, but that's not a very good representation of my sample as a whole. So what we can do with the trim mean is look at the middle part of the data. Oftentimes we might trim off the top 50 per, the top 5 or 10 percent and the bottom top the bottom 5 per, 5 and 10 percent as well now when we do the trim mean we want to trim off both the highest and the lowest so it's not just get rid of the outliers but it's actually balance it out by taking something off the top and something off the bottom in this case i have the scores ordered again from lowest to highest and if I were to take off the lowest number and the highest number, in this case 63 and 85, that leaves me with 18, middles, 18 numbers in the middle. And so again, I can calculate the mean just like I did before, summing up the 18 numbers and dividing by 18, and we get uh, what's called the trim mean. So in this case, it's 73.5. The average was 73.55, so in this case there's not much of a difference there, but in other cases we're going to see much more of a difference than, than, than in this case here. Now when would we want to use the, these different, different types of things? Looking at these, these are three different distributions. Um, in, in the top one, this is what's called a normal distribution. We have a peak in the middle and it falls down symmetrically to even so, e either side. In this case, the mean, median, and the mode are all the same number. So if I want to say what's the middle of the data, any of these would actually work. Down in the, le in the left corner, we have what's called a negatively skewed distribution. In this case, most of the numbers are much higher, and then you have a few numbers down low that are pulled out to the left. This is very common with well-being measures. So oftentimes when I give a well-being survey, most people will actually score above the middle point of the scale, kind of with a positive bias there, but you will get some low scorers who will be further down. You can also have what's called positively skewed data um, in, in, um, in the case of the right. In this case, most numbers are fairly low, but you have a few numbers that are very high. This is the income example that I gave you, where perhaps that millionaire is kind of pulling out the distribution. Now with skewed data, we see the mode is kind of hitting that peak, and actually the mean is not a very good representation of the middle of the data. Oftentimes with skewed data, we use the median as our indicator of, of, our, of the center of the data. We also might use the trim mean if we can actually trim off those outliers. So when would you want to use each of these? Um, if you have more categorical variables, you'd use the mode just to say which category is most frequent. If you have a normal distribution, you'd use the mean because every it's in the middle. If I have a skewed distribution, I would use a median. And if I have maybe one or two outliers, I'd use the trimmed mean. Now it's your turn. Here's a set of scores. Can you calculate the mean, 
the median, and the mode. For an extra challenge, remove the top and bottom score and calculate the trim mean. Here's the answers. Here's another one. When would you use each of these? You can take a moment and think about each of these types. Would you use the mean, the median, the mode, or perhaps the trim mean? So measures of central tendency are probably the most basic statistic that we can use. It can seem rather simplistic, but it's something that we always report. We always report at least the mean, oftentimes the median if it's going to be skewed in some ways, or the mode if I have categorical variables. Um, we're going to use these a lot, especially the mean as we move forward, as it's, it's the base of many of the other st statistics that we use throughout the rest of this series. That brings us to the end of the lecture. See you next time. Thanks.